you're more likely to be called out to do things. Right. Before we begin, you should should you need to recall any messages, they can be recalled by clicking the appropriate button on the hood and clicking the arrows to scroll through the messages. That's these ones here. Hey, driver, so you're here to learn the basics of the battery loco today. First things first, it's a bit warm in here, so feel free to open the cab windows or doors. We will, because I like opening windows and doors. Right, two very important instruments are over to your right. They are the voltmeter and the ammeter. The voltmeter shows the voltage being supplied by the batteries, while the ammeter shows the, cool to, the, the current being drawn by the two motors. So there's our voltmeter, there's our ammeter. Lovely. The voltmeter currently is showing no volts, okay? No, it's not. This is because the circuit between the motors and the batteries has been broken by the circuit breaker. Normally the voltmeter will read the voltage being supplied by the batteries. You should keep an eye on this as the day goes by. With the batteries fully charged, the voltage will read about 400 volts. As the current is drawn by the motors and the auxiliary systems, the batteries will discharge. As this happens, voltage will drop. Allowing the batteries to discharge below around uh, 320 will cause permanent damage to the batteries and the voltage will drop rapidly at this point. As such, you should aim to stop working before you reach this voltage. Fully charge the batteries. Fully charge the batteries should be good for about three hours of use. Brilliant. Right, I'll read that one in a second. Uh, you have a feeling I'm going to fail with the 3B. Uh, lots. Uh, it is the learning scenario. Uh, lots of message boxes, but uh, since. Scotsman is so confident that I'm going to fail he can put his uh, tickets where his confidence lies there we go the other instrument is the ammeter when either taking power or using the electric brake you should keep a close eye on the reading the motors on this unit have a continuous rating of 240A or at or below this current there is no risk of overheating and damaging the motors. However if the current exceeds this value the motors will begin to overheat. The rate of this overheating is dependent on the current being drawn. At 400 amps the motors will take about 30 seconds to overheat and fail. This also applies to the electric brake and the same restrictions apply. It is therefore imperative to keep an eye on the current and minimize the time where the current is greater than, two, than 280. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit on this. Okay, I can't actually read them from here, but never mind. As mentioned, the circuit is currently broken. Uh, the main circuit breaker is on the roof. To close the breaker, the handle is moved to the right position. Alternatively, the key P can be pressed. So that's off, that's on. When you do, if you look at the voltmeter, you'll notice that the reading has risen to around 400. So if we close that, and then we close this, that will drop. Uh, indicating the circuit is complete. The circuit breaker will trip if a current around 410 amps is exceeded when taking power, preventing damage to the motors. However, it will not trip when using the electric brakes. So now you can see that's dead. Turn that, that'll then pop back up again. Uh, there are there are many messages. Da, 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 da. Chris very well thanks um, did I say hi to Chris possibly hi Chris before we get going it's probably best to go over the braking system the locomotive is fitted with two braking systems the first and most important is the handbrake this can be applied using the comma key and released with the colon key 
Alternatively, the handle is turned clockwise to apply and anti-clockwise to release. There's our brake. The handbrake is a type of, is of a screw type, and though a series of and through a series of levers, applies cast iron block brakes to the tyres. One charismatic of cast iron block brakes is the change in effectiveness at different speeds. At low speeds, the brake bites strongly and the engine can easily slide. However, the effectiveness of the brakes decreases as speed increases. Prolonged use of the handbrake can also cause the brake blocks to heat up and fade, leading to a brake failure and probably a rather nasty accident. One sign the brakes are starting to fail is sparks coming from between the brake blocks and tyres, or the thing, or the fact that we're not slowing down. Next message block. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, why did I read this? Much, mm, much, much more. Is is this Ed's fault? They do look like Ed messages, actually. Keep it slow is good advice. Okay. Right, the other brake is the rheostatic brake, otherwise known as the electric brake. This brake creates short circuits. This brake short circuits both motors together and uses residual magnetism in the motor armatures to turn them into generators, and attaches a bank of resistors generating a brake braking effect. The characteristic of this brake is that it's completely ineffective at low speeds, as the currents generated are negligible, preventing the generator effect. However, it's at speed, this brake becomes very fierce and care should be taken when operating it. Mm -hmm. The brake will operate regardless of whether the motors are isolated from the battery. However, if one motor is isolated, the brake cannot operate. Uh, okay. It's also important to heed the earlier warnings of keeping an eye on a current. Uh, in order to operate the brake, the power handle is moved anticlockwise past the off position. There are seven brake notches, each one reducing the resistance applied to the brake circuit, increasing the effectiveness of the brake. Can we? No. We can't go yet. David, good evening. Uh, I am driving the battery operated garden shed, yes. Why not just read the text and go for it? The sparks are animated, they look cool. <laughs> now before we get moving, let's get some lights on. The battery loco can be fitted with two types, electrically operated style and old style power fin lights. Depending on which external lights are fitted, they can be operated with the switchboard to your right. The top left switch on this engine operates the front headlight while the bottom the rear. So we'll put the front on. Boom. The other switches are spare. To place power fin lamps on the irons, uh, front lamps can be placed with control 1. There is no middle lamp on this engine, so 2 doesn't do anything. Uh, 5 through 8 for the... For the rear, okay. Uh, with the lamps place the red filter for each lamp can be removed by comparing respect to the lamp number. Okay. Lovely. Are we now ready to go? Let's put it into forward then. Right, so if we go control five, no. Nope. There is also a switch for the cab light over to your left. Left is this way, there it is. And oh, don't forget the lights will also discharge the battery, so don't leave them on overnight. This can be operated with the H key. Give it a try if you like. Okay, lovely. In order to aid with additional locomotive, is fitted with two sets of sanders. Uh, gravity operation sanders are operated by foot pedals directly below you. C and X keys. The engine is fitted with a circuit breaker. Yeah, we've looked at that. Engine is fitted with two warning devices. The first of which is foot-operated, a gong. 
This can be sounded by pressing the space bar. Because the bell isn't terribly loud for safety reasons, the engine is also fitted with electrically operated klaxon on the roof, which can be sounded with the B key. Right, let's get a moving, shall we? First thing we need to do manages the reverser. The reverser key isn't in the position, press E to position the reverser in the slot. Okay, moving them from will polarize the motors for the forward direction. Uh, okay, so if we put that back, to, if we put that back to middle and then press E, oh cool. Oh gosh, parallel. Am I really reading all of this? And, um, oh, I'm just gonna go for it. Forget the. Forget. I think it's time to get moving. Let's head on up to the colliery. Before we get moving, I think we should set the route using the nine key to colliery siding one. Clicking on the points and setting the blue lines to that siding. Good idea. Right. Oh. First things first. Let's check the main circuit breaker is closed. Once done, take the handbrake off. Once done, move the reverse and notch forward and set the control to series notch one. Like once you know, start. Uh, sort of powering coast, okay, lovely. Right, can I now, thank you. We're coming into that siding. Yes. Are we, where are we? We're there. We're not yet allowed out because of that one. So we need to switch that one and that one. Lovely. No, we're not going to be going downhill because we haven't started going forwards yet. Just series one. Uh, I chose the scenario. I went with the loco that you guys was th were telling me to go with. Yes, you can tell. Why right, not? I'm not reading that. I don't like this loco. Right, let me step up. It is uh, Rob Put. Hello and welcome. That is how you can tell this is one of Ed's locos because it is very complex. It's great that everything does everything, but right, uh, we need to put a red filter on that. And it might be because we're moving. Oh well. Let's take a snapshot of it. Uh, 
complex and the 73 text boxes to start yep what is that thing it's called the B3 um, guys when we put this up onto YouTube are we classing this as an electric loco well, what was that again the klaxon This is battery operated, yes. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what the top speed is. Seems to be 10 mile an hour on this bank. Right, we made that in plenty of time. Let's apply a tiny bit of brake. And then we can put the handbrake on, like so. Shift on five should have put that onto red. Lovely, good work. Now let's tidy up some of the wagons in this siding. We're starting on the hill. While taking the handbrake off, make sure to apply one two notches of power to prevent the loco from rolling back. A uh, couple of all the wagons in this siding. In siding one. So we're gonna. Right, what's our, What is our actual instruction? Marshal all of those to there. Right, I've got to find those. Okay. So, what are you? I have no idea. Right, so we've got to get them. Then we've got to get them. Is it them? I don't know, and there's no way of me bringing them up. Right, let's go. Try out a new wherry lines 150 scenario. I don't have the 150 or the wherry lines. F6. Oh, does that bring up? No. Unless it does on the map. Nope. Right, ready to couple up to them. Perhaps F6 and F7. Ah, there we go.
Right, that should couple. Put on a bit of handbrake. And couple that up. Right, so there's four of them. Then we're going to add a couple of notches of that and take the brake off. So we don't need those. Right, that's 5.8. Is 5.8 on my task list? Yes, it is. Okay, that's fine. Five eight seven six. So we 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 should have gone through there. Two. Put that into forwards. Which won't go into forwards. Why? Ah, uh, because we've got the brake on, that's why. Right, we should this time be able to go and get them. Couple those, couple those. And then stop at the coal siding once. So stop back here. Right, let's bring that in for the couple. that. Oh, we did that. No, we haven't, not yet. Right, moving on. Right, so what have we got now? We need... Oh, we need those those as well. well. That's no good. Oh, wait, oh, four. Um. Ah, oh, I see what it's getting us to do. I don't know if it needs to be in that order, so I'm going to do it in that order. Is that the points lever wonder? I've only just managed to work out what's going on NASCAR, so it's it's not surprising that you don't know. No, 
three, two, two, thank you. So I'm gonna go up and collect these, then come back and then go up and collect those. Right. Let's put some handbrake on and switch the lever again. Let's take the actual brake off, put that on to forward, knock up a couple of notches and let the brake go. You're going to chill on a game. Okay, not a problem, uh, White Mead. Thank you very much for joining. As with all of these types, you have to know where the stuff is. Yeah, that's the difficult bit. just in there so we shall uh, inch up to it like so there we won't we haven't touched we didn't quite touch There we have. Right now that we've touched, just give me a second and I'll check that follow. One I can there we go. Right, back again. Uh the follow was Dezika Just Live. Dezika Just Live, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. You join me as we're shunting in a new loco being that little thing there. Alright, backwards nice and steady. Starting to roll down the hill, but that's fine because we can put on a little bit of brake now. And then we can compensate that with the handbrake. Switch that back, lovely. Turn that brake off, put that into forward. Start it going forward. Take that one off. Oh, that's a bit too heavy. Come on, you can do it. Come on. What time do we need to be done by? 12.05, not going to happen. Not in a month of Sundays is that going to happen. Mainly because I've come too far over this, this ridge. So that should be 9.20. F8, F6. Yep, so we got 9.20, uh, 3, 3.20 to pick up, and then we're done. Okay, Snaily, thank you very much for, for joining. Um, we'll be around again very shortly. Um, I'll be back on, on Thursday for Transport Fever and on Sunday for Trains. Oh, that was lucky. Right, couple, 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 couple. It's not working. That, that doesn't always work for me. 
Right, forwards. Brilliant. Release. Let's go to forwards. And straight into there, and then we get to stop. Break on. And a couple. Good. Nicely done. You're getting the hang of this now for trick operation to send in that bank. Head on over to siding three. Uh, once there, a couple to the south end of the wagons. In the nearest downhill section, make sure to. I wonder if you just hang it. Okay, so siding three is next. Let's go. So, what's the best way into siding three from here? Come down, down to there, and then back up from there. Okay, that's fine. Let's get ourselves up to 15. I don't have a lot of time to do this. Gets the coupling attached and signals to, for me to roll forwards. Thank ya. I think I read that a bit late though. Right, we're up to 15. Do we have any other. Yes, we do. Lovely. That's where we're going next, is into there. Right, balance in between this break one and that break which isn't quite so easy oh are we cl are we far enough away yes we are ha brilliant right time to go And you now hang on for dear life. <laughs> right, into siding three. Where are we going with them? Oh, down there, okay. And then we're stopping back down the bottom. Okay, that's fine.
No, not so quickly. Right, now just tap. Or crunch, as the case may be. No, don't roll. Crunch. That'll do. Stay there. Right, brilliant. Okay, we have 11 loaded which way is about that much tons. Uh, set the route for southbound siding 3 using the map, take the handbrake off and apply power once underway. Work up through the notches, keep an eye on the ammo tool and so back to da 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 da. Electric crease, electric brake setting further. Okay. Something, something, something. About something, right. We are. Coming down there, through to there, and we're coming into where? Uh, siding 3. There. So that's set, that's set, that's set. It's that one that needs to be set. Right, let's go. Right, if you're talking about hanging on for dear life, now is the time to do it. I have no idea how many viewers we've got on. Twenty-six, nice. Right. I do want to view the map further down. How far down? Does it go all the way down? Fourth. I don't know. Right, continuing down the bank. starts running for cover. Right, we're up to 19 mile an hour now. Just a little bit of braking to keep that under control. says a little bit of braking isn't doing a lot oh we're fine Fox line, yeah. No, not yet. Look at the wheels, we might see sparks. 
No sing yeah. Right, anytime you want to stop, please tell me. Anytime. Right. Let's pin down the brake, shall we? Lovely. And uncouple. Right, we're now going to call siding one. Which is where? There, I believe. Centre player, show task. Okay, so we're going to come down here, back up, and then back down. That's fine. I did make the 15 limit only just. Usually see them when braking coming downhill. That gong is tiny. That's, at least the klaxon's a bit louder. Right, so we're stopping there. And the scenario will end. Yeah, that's all set for us. Down we go. Right, a little bit of braking, a bit of handbrake too. Put that into forward. And away we go. No, why did that not switch? Oh, it did, it just switched to the wrong place. Come on, I've got two minutes and a half. Got two minutes and a half, and Scotsman's going to scream hacks. Right, there we go. Forward and off we go. I think that deserves a couple of tips in that tip jar. That tip jar is getting a bit dusty. It hasn't had a bit in it for ages. Oh, and by the way, there were no entries into last month's competition, so it still stands. Right, that's that changed. Handbrake for the last bit. Backwards, off. What's that music? Uh, Miss Jenks is playing some music and she's just walked in. Uh, yes, it is Miss Jenks' phone. Mr. Mr. Foxley. Right, there we go. And then we can stop there. And everybody's happy. Right, we did it with... Ooh, easily 45 seconds to spare. Well done, you have completed the scenario successfully. That's a thousand points. A thousand points. Oh, Mr. Scotsman, with your, what was it earlier? 
that that you said. Uh, let me go back. Let me go back. Have a feeling that Captain is going to fail at the three B. Uh, look at yeah, rigged. Yeah, whatever. Look and weep. <laughs> how? Because uh, I'm awesome. That's how. I don't know why it says no XP gain now. But anyway, that's a glod. That is a glod to me. To me, a glod. Glod to me. That was epic. Thank you very much, Mr. Jellybean. 